This episode of The Clear Out was recorded on the 23rd of May 2023 at home in Wicklow. And it is an episode that looks at the idea of safety. I look at safety in terms of environmental safety and interpersonal safety. And I elaborate on what that looks like for me. And I am primarily talking about one's personal sense of safety in the world and in the relationships in which one finds oneself. And I talk about how the idea of safety is very central to my concept of of wellness. And... As part of that discussion, I look at my ongoing soap opera of a relationship with my daughter and discuss uh, a a heated exchange we had on the um, on the evening I recorded the podcast. And I look at that and, as always, examine my own behavior, examine my own parenting um what parenting skills parenting strategy or the absence of my parenting skills the absence of a strategy i look at my my reactivity in those situations and uh, funnily enough the the very first episode of the podcast that was a, a key topic of discussion and that was almost exactly uh two years ago because the the second birthday of the podcast is, is is coming up in a few days um and yeah we i keep on rolling so um yeah so that's what's coming up um me my relationships safety as a keystone of of wellness and as as a keystone of healthy relationships and i explain why My favorite kind of relationship is is the one-on-one, not being in the group, not being in a crowd, not being with three, four, five, but one-on-one, because I argue that that's where, that's where there's a real exchange. That's where life is experienced and life is lived in the exchange. Okay, so that's what's coming up. Safety, safety. Uh, I'll see you around the corner. Cheers. Ooh, not gonna change my mind. Leaving the dream behind. Keep my mojo inside. Hi, my name is Dara Clear, and you're listening to The Clear Out. You're very welcome. How are you at the point of listening? At the moment of listening? Do you feel safe? That's a good question, and that is what I'm going to be talking about today, the idea of safety. (laughs) Fasten your seatbelts, it's going to be a bumpy ride. That might be a misquote, but I do think of the movie All About Eve. What a classic of backstabbing bitchiness <laughs> and actor actorly ambition uh, a movie I was very fond of at one point I haven't watched it for a long time anyway here we are another another week done um, I just had an ice burger before pressing record do you know what an ice burger is if you're from these shores you will, or even the shores across the Irish Sea, you probably will. An ice cream sandwich, maybe it's called an Eskimo bar, is it, somewhere else? Possibly, it could be called a lot of things. But it's basically a block, you know, a man-sized block, (laughs) a child-sized block, a block of vanilla ice cream sandwiched in brown cookie dough. Would that be right? Is that is that is that a terrible like biscuit? I don't know. I don't think about these things. I just eat them, and it was it was yummy. (laughs) 
I was feeling very hot, I thought an ice burger will cool me down. Uh, yeah, Maeve, my daughter and I were, were home alone this evening because Kiara's out doing a gig and she won't be back, she won't be back till late. And Maeve and I had a nice little, it wasn't a big fight, it was a small one and it wasn't really a fight. I was just being very cranky and she had enough of my crankiness and called me out on it and she gave me a good shove which I was amused by even though I was even though I was being grumpy I was amused by her uh, amused and not not in a patronizing way like amused and impressed by her her spirit her 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 will to fight the words she used in fact were don't why are you being so dramatic and such a cranky something or other I can't remember what she said um and one of the reasons I can't remember is I'm just I'm 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 knackered I'm so tired at the moment it's uh I don't know what's going on the last the last three or four days I can barely stay awake during the day and I've been active I've been busy I've been doing stuff I've been getting definitely getting enough sleep by my my normal standards but um yeah I've been exhausted now I do I am going going through hay getting I've got hay fever at the moment I'm going through hay fever oh my god is it bad uh do you go through hay fever I've got hay fever I'm suffering from hay fever I'm enduring hay fever I mean I'm taking uh I'm taking uh, an antihistamine every day and uh, that's usually pretty dependable but I'm still getting the sneezes so you can hear I'm a little bit I'm a little bit stuffy um and I think that's tiring me out as well I'm just getting those bouts of the the stinging um watery eyes and the the uncontrollable sneezing and I have to say it is a complete pain in the ass it drives me mad it makes me want to scream so um instead of me getting angry angrier with my daughter um I thought well I'll better lay all this out so she was furious with me and because I was laughing uh she was even more annoyed she's like you know you can't go from being cranky to suddenly messing and I was like no no I'm not messing and I said look I think the reason I'm cranky uh and then I said well I said well what do you think what do you think what do you think is the the number one thing that could be making me cranky and um oh what was her first suggestion she said money <laughs> I mean, oh man, that's not great, is it? And I said, no, 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 it's not money. It's not money. I said, that's not really something that makes me particularly cranky. And then she said, uh, mama. <laughs> and I said, sometimes, but no, not right now. Um, she said, yourself. And I said, yeah, sometimes I do. I do make myself angry. I do get cranky with myself. And I said, no, I said, fatigue, I'm tired, I'm really tired. And uh, I've also got hay fever. And I said, also, I think it's my personality because I like to have control. And I'm, at the time of us having this little spat, I was cooking dinner for us in the kitchen and she was in the on the far side of the room. Um, I couldn't quite hear her properly and I was probably just lost in my own thoughts and trying to just yeah get dinner together and just thinking about a few logistical things coming up this week and a few other things my head was pretty full and um, uh, Maeve came at me with some question just a classic nine-year-old question um, why do people like dark, dark chocolate? <laughs> and I just was like, what? 
I was like, what the, what, what, what do you mean? I said, people just like what they like. <laughs> Why do you like peanut butter? Because it tastes peanut buttery. And I said, yeah, well, people like dark chocolate because it's dark chocolatey. Um, and she's like, why are you getting so angry? <laughs> and then, yeah, she gave me the push and yeah, we had the conversation. Um, but as far as I was, con as far as I'm concerned, it was all, you know, it was good. I mean, I wasn't, I'm not saying I'm delighted with myself for being particularly irritable and snapping at Maeve, but I do, I do uh, value the, the fact that we can recover quite quickly and sort of genuinely get back to a place of understanding with its well to my mind <laughs> with its sort of implied forgiveness um so yeah we had we had a nice evening in the end really nice may have had a sports day today and she uh, it was other schools were also participating and it was a yeah, kind of an athletics day she took part in a relay race and she also took part in the long jump and she was very disappointed that she didn't get a medal. She's saying, I really wanted a medal. I really want to get a medal for sport. Um, and I just said, well, great. I mean, just keep practicing, keep going to your athletics training and eventually it'll happen. You're going to get better and you'll get more competitive and it's out there for you to win. Um, and the thing is, I don't think I mean quite similar to me May is not naturally competitive um, she just wants the medal <laughs> yeah and I'm a bit like that as well it's not that it's, it's not that like it's not just give me the medal I mean I, I'm happy to take part I'm happy to compete but I'm not I'm not really motivated by competition um, and I, I mean I I look at that, I have looked at that in myself over the years and I understand that to be, uh, it's a little bit of a, a conflict averse impulse and a desire just to kind of get along with others. Um, I know that's in the mix on a kind of a, on a deeper level. Um, now, I, I, I don't have to dig too deep at all to pull up memories um, of me being extremely competitive, um, in particularly in uh, karate when sparring, or in in football, playing football, playing playing soccer. Um, that's, it's, but it's interesting those those settings are very controlled um because i have I, I never played competitive football i never played like 11 aside so these are these are friendly um you know five aside six aside seven aside games um i think i think i was speaking about this quite recently um, i'm currently playing with a very good bunch of guys all in their you know mid 40s to mid 50s um maybe some younger than that but a pretty mellow bunch and it's a nice it's a nice level of uh, competition within our game um, yeah in any case I was kind of a, a, a great movie about wanting a medal if you want to, to check check one out <laughs> you could do much worse than watch Wreck-It Ralph the animated movie from I don't know five six seven years ago the very funny central performance by John C. Riley doing the voice of the computer game character Wreck It Ralph, who um, is yeah his role in his own computer game is to destroy the building of uh, Fix It Felix, and um, no one really wants. Ralph involved when the computer game characters get together for their parties and their celebrations and all he wants all he wants is a medal so he can feel like he's a winner and not a loser um, it's good it's good my wife finds it a bit too frenetic 
Um, but if she wants frenetic, she should really watch Wreck It Ralph too, which takes it to a whole other level. I think Wreck It Ralph is really very sweet. Um, no, it's very funny and well worth well worth checking out just to um, immerse yourself in the world of uh, arcade video games. Um, but good characters, funny stuff, and, and John C. Riley's very good. He's always good value, isn't he? Anyway. What else? Is there anything else before I jump to my, my main thing? My main thing. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I've been watching Succession. Have you been watching Succession? We're um I'm not, we're not quite up to speed. We're about one or two episodes behind on the the current final season of Succession. Um Yeah, they really are uh, they really are an odious bunch. The Roy's, the scions of the media, Tycoon, um, Logan Roy, great, great characters. Um, I don't know how how much we're to to take it that they are truly based on Rupert Murdoch and his his family. There's a lot of crossover, but you could you could, you could probably take any mega wealthy dynasty and find similar. Uh, personality types and um, ridiculous and dysfunctional behaviour that's the the product of unending wealth and very dubious values so much damage my goodness so much damage Um, yeah so why was I thinking of those guys because I was thinking of this idea of safety. What does what does safety look like to you? Because I I put safety in a very central part of how I conceive um, wellness and. I mean, yet again, you might think, well, I'm stating something very, very obvious, but safety, I feel like safety isn't a word that gets thrown out there very much when people talk about wellness and personal development or or doing the work uh, on oneself. Um personal responsibility uh rebuilding um whatever whatever the, the you know the, the, the chosen phrases might be the, the 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 wellness concepts the the psychology concepts um but i know myself i put a very high premium on the idea of safety um and to me safety is primarily environmental and interpersonal so environmental is are you in a good space like a good physical space how how are things arranged around you and you know it might be it might be this might be related to the feng shui it might be related to the the physical things in your in your space it might be related to what's around your space where you live where you spend your time um i mean you can infer from me referring to this place as hashtag blessed that i i have a very good opinion of of this space the home space where uh, I live with Kiara and Maeve, it's um, it yeah. I, I mean, it's it, it, it to me, it's 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 rather idyllic. Um, I'm not always sure. Uh, Kiara shares my opinion, but I think it's very special. And there's a a safety in that because there's there's good energy around because of the the environmental surroundings um 
course, it's very easy to uh, to dislodge good energy. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure that's how Maeve felt earlier on this evening. Um, I went down to check on her to say goodnight to her, um, and she was sound asleep, which doesn't happen very often these days. But I guess if she'd had a big day out running around in the sun uh, with her pals. Uh, and then we we hit the sea this afternoon um, because I, I I collected her from Kiara dropped her off to me after work and I then Maeve and I went down to the beach and I had a swim and she had a, a paddle in the just in the waves hitting the shore and then back here and there was more messing back here she was cycling around on her bicycle in the garden um, nice nice good stuff. I mean, great stuff, I think. Um, I'm hoping at some point in the future, uh, when Maeve's a grown-up, she'll look back and go, that was a good childhood. Um, because she doesn't always give us that impression. <laughs> the, uh, the dreaded phrase, I'm bored, comes out um, with disturbing frequency. Um... But yeah, safety. Um, environmental is probably kind of obvious. Um, and, you, you know, I, 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 I just have to say, like, I mean, I don't take, I just don't take this for granted. I don't take it for granted that we've fetched up in a lovely place down in the countryside. Um, I don't take that for granted at all. Um, but it, it definitely is, it definitely is what I was hoping for when we, when we moved back home, when we left Australia three years ago and came back to Ireland, this was kind of, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, if I'd stopped and written down, could I have this, 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 and this, what we ended up with was, was pretty much that, um, and even better, um. And you know, lucky us. That's all I can say. Uh, we had a we had a friend to visit last week. Um, I gave him a shout out last week, George. So George came to visit, and yeah, he um, he was commenting on uh, the fact that we always seem to end up in very nice places, and that is some kind of fluky thing that. Uh, Karen and I have always managed to to achieve in our in our time together. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that works. It really is random, and it's it's good luck. Um, and if the universe hasn't smiled on us very obviously in 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 other areas, it has smiled on us in that particular area. And so. Uh, I say thank you <laughs> thank you universe um yeah anyway safety i also mentioned the interpersonal idea and i mean this this had this had been on my mind for a couple of days i, I don't know where this started this 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 kind of reflection or focusing my brain just turning my brain to look at this idea of safety but I was thinking about it tonight um, when Maeve and I were having our row um, because I was going, OK, so does Maeve feel safe? And I think, yeah, I think, um, as I said earlier, we're lucky in that, as in she and I, or maybe maybe just me, maybe I'm lucky that she trusts me enough that um, even if I'm being unreasonably irritable shouty cranky angry um, she trusts that I'll come away from that and uh, account for myself and make sure she understands that it's not her fault or again I mean I, I, I'm making it sound I'm probably painting a horrific picture <laughs> you know 
I apologize for being cranky. She's like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's grand. Like, damn, she, she, you know, it's it's happened with such unfortunate frequency over over the years that she's like, yeah, I'm used to it. Um, and I continue to try and look at it and be, you know, be accountable and deal better with whatever is lying underneath. Because there's always something. There's always you know there's always something underneath that's that's how it works well that's how it works with me i don't know what your experience is but that's how it works with me it's 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 the simmer it's the bubbling underneath the surface um it's those emotions or anxieties or concerns or or frustrations and then the the everyday um the everyday demands, uh, the, the you know the, the the mundane demands of of home life, of family life, are are disruptive to to trying to get your head around that stuff. There, you know, the demands of you know making dinner and feeding <laughs> feeding the pets and tidying the the house or you know having showers, whatever, all the this, the everyday stuff that can just feel like um, an, an interruption and a distraction and that that yeah the, the, the distraction of of something coming in that you just when you're trying to get your head around something else um, and my you know my habit of spending a lot of time um, in the kind of interior space the interior space of of my mind lost in thought wrangling emotions trying to get and you know get 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 my head around something and then this this great person in my life my daughter just jumps in with a non sequitur some random question i'm like what the hell and it's completely on me it's not on her at all uh but yeah i think i think it's really important that i don't blow it that i don't i don't i don't indulge myself too much and give and you know and i've spoken about this before the idea of kind of giving yourself permission um in fact if you go all the way back to the first episode I was speaking about this very this very thing, you know, you know, little these little skirmishes I have with my daughter, um, and how we can give ourselves permission to treat our our loved ones badly because we operate on the assumption that they'll always be around, and that there's no time limit on on the relationship on the. There's no time limit on the learning curve. And it's a terrible arrogance. It's a terrible it's a terrible kind of presumptuousness to to depend on that idea. To go, it'll be fine because she's not going anywhere. <laughs> and um I think that can make us I think that makes us very complacent. Um and it can yeah, I mean, I think if I speak for myself, I think it, it makes me, it can make me, um, you know, conflict avoidant or uh, issues avoidant. Like certainly, I think that's, I think that's um, a pattern that can really take over a marriage, for example. I'm not saying that's my own experience, but there are elements of that. There are elements of that where I know. I know my wife and I, my wife, whenever I talk about, <laughs> if I ever talk about stuff, if, I, if I'm ever like tiptoeing around um, the touchy subject of marital unease or relationship disharmony, I'll, I'll often refer to Chiara as my wife. <laughs> but... But what I was going to say before was, I know, I know that my wife and I, that we, 
we you know there are conversations we just don't have because we're wrecked because we're knackered because we just feel like we just don't have the time the headspace the emotional bandwidth to to take stuff on to to start a conversation that we instinctively are wary of fearful of that we instinctively assume is going to lead to some sort of fight or unpleasantness or some issue that we feel like oh man we're just going to be at that same at that same kind of uh flashpoint again and so you just kind of go eh, i'll just yeah i'll just i'll just i'll just let that one go for now i'll deal with that later i'll deal with that later i'll deal with that later it's not i mean you, you it, it it really isn't the recommended course of action, is it? But sometimes it's, I don't know, it, it's it's the only way you can survive. Um, yeah, if I have anything more to, to, to add to that or, or anything more to come back to on that in, in, in the future, I, I will. But, um, but yeah, for now, the idea then of safety between people 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 the idea of safety between people i think i just think it's so so important and for me i was thinking about this earlier for me i've always loved the and I mean I may have mentioned this before but I've always loved and continue to love the one on one yeah do you know what I mean when I say that like just you and one other person that dynamic that form of relating and I suppose I'm just thinking I'm just thinking about it now thinking in my seat um i suppose one element of why i like that is because it's controllable and maybe yeah maybe maybe it's 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 easier when there's only one other person to to be a little bit of a chameleon to be a bit more adaptable to change with the flow of the conversation with the flow of the exchange to accommodate um to adapt it's not as easy to do that when there's more than one person um because that's there's more variables obviously the more people that are involved the more variables there are and it's the whole thing of three's a crowd um and i i don't know i mean i i my my when there's more than one i might fall back on just being very quiet and observant um i mean depending on the people involved of course but i think yeah, I think that's 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 one of the reasons I like the the one on one dynamic in particular, and it is. I mean, I use that word controllable. Um, that to me is there, there, there's a safety you see. Um, so when you can control things, that's a that's a version of of safety, isn't it? And that, of course, makes me then ask the question: Well. What, what are you afraid of <laughs> what's what's the big risk why why is there an attraction to that 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 type of control or that interpretation of control or the imposition of that control matrix onto uh, a relationship um, and I suppose really i mean to be to be to be to be completely open to be completely transparent i mean it, it does come from you know my my family dynamics growing up um and the 
what I'm trying to choose my my words carefully here um you know t- to be accurate not not for fear of misrepresentation but I'm trying to think what the the best word is I mean I can you can talk about dysfunctional that's fine um unreliable that's fine but I would say yeah unsafe Uns- what you know, what like what does an unsafe relationship look like if a relationship is unsafe it means there's an ever present likelihood of being hurt um and when that's coming from people very close to you um that's uh I mean that's that, that's that I think that's incredibly dangerous and destructive. Um, what yeah what, what 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 do you think of that? Is that something that makes sense to you? Does that is that something you can relate to? Does that speak to you? Um, I mean the way I understand it and think about it, it it's simply it's simply kind of damaged people it's it's damaged wounded people interacting um you just never know when you're going to accidentally step on someone's wound <laughs> is that is that is that a bit gross is that a bit gratuitous but you know what i mean it's um i think communication is one of the the first casualties of of interpersonal damage communication i mean and maybe maybe it's not enough to, to just to say communication in a, in a general sense but clear communication honest communication open communication unfiltered communication um and again okay maybe unfiltered characterizes it the wrong way but but you know what I mean? The um, the feeling that you can that you can be honest, that you can express yourself. Um, another one of my favorite themes. Are you expressing yourself? Is this a safe place in which to express yourself, your thoughts, your feelings, your whatever uh, your perspective your story your memory um your 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 hurt your anguish is this a safe place or is it not a safe place and if it's not a safe place and but you continue in that relationship um it's trouble it's just a sort of self enveloping thing that becomes more and more enmeshed and covered up and um misleading i suppose uh yeah and that 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 simply can't it just it just can't come to any good and it's not serving it's not serving you and it's not serving the other person it's it, it's it's just something sort of um warped and fundamentally destabilizing and so the the opposite then when you can go there's safety in this relationship there's safety with this person there's safety in this dynamic then that's that's the opposite isn't it then 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 it's something that's that's edifying that's nourishing that's enriching um and of course it it lays the ground for for trust and trust is 
is, is it, it, it's a, you know, safety and, and, and trust and, and love. They, they go hand in hand. If we're, if we're going to engage with an idea of, of functional love, I think safety and trust are, are essential. Um, because otherwise, otherwise that, 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 otherwise that love is, um, what's it, what's it predicated on? What, what, what's it, what's it based on? Um, and don't get me wrong, because love, of course, is, you know, you don't wait to feel love. Oh yeah, now now I feel safe. Now I trust you. Now I can love you. You may love. <laughs> I mean, you know, love, and particularly if we're, if we're thinking of, particularly if we're thinking of romantic love, um, that can lead you all sorts of, all, all sorts of places, all sorts of strange places, and lead you to all sorts of strange people, um, and some of those people may not be may not be good for you. Um, but then, yeah, then you have to, you have to start learning. You have to uh, see what that thing is. And if it's, if it's taking you to a better place or not. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm listening to the, the language I'm using um, over the last while. And it, 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 it can sound a little bit transactional you know is it serving you is it taking you to a better place um and it, it's as much as I'm, I'm using language like that it's i mean I, I don't think about these things as as transactional even though i think in good relationships there is um there's an exchange and maybe it's um you know it, that that exchange is it, it's a stepping into a frequency it's stepping into a moment um together it's stepping into space together and being willing being willing to to be there and go on on the journey um, and I think you know you know when you're with someone who's there with you and you know when you're with someone who's just not and that like that to me is a very a very clear sign that things aren't quite right <laughs> when you're with somebody and this is you know this is just in general this is like a, you know this could be any form of relationship um, but if we're talking about you know, you know friends or whatever um you know i think we all it, it, maybe we maybe we don't maybe i shouldn't speak for the we but don't you know I, I, don't you know when someone's withholding can't you tell can't you feel it when someone is not really fully there with you um uh, i mean that's a very uh that's a very particular feeling, isn't it? It's like, well, if you're not here with me, where the hell are you? Why are, you know, what, what's, what's the story? <laughs> um, and then I think if you've got a good relationship with someone, you can, you can have those conversations. And that's what, um, yeah, what is it? What is it? Like, what does, what does that do for you? Um, is it just I don't know it's it, it's I mean the word affirmation comes to mind but I, I don't think that's quite right I, I think it's something to do with the the like the exchange the exchange is actually the sharing of the moment it's the sharing of the experience 
Um, and I just think a very important part of life is lived there. Um, like the other night uh, when our friend George was here, um, the girls went off to bed and George and I were sitting up chatting and George was... Uh, George was you know, full of chat, as was I. I was tired, but I was very happy to see George. I hadn't seen him for a long time. It was a really nice catch-up, and um, it was getting quite late. And he... Um, how did he put it? I'm trying to remember. It was quite funny. <laughs> um, I think it was... A, he said, do you, think, do you think you'd like to go outside and listen to the to the stream the river there's a little there's a little stream a big stream a little river that flows through the garden here at hashtag blessed and yeah the way he put it to me was like he was asking oh yeah it's not something you'd like to do but really what he was saying is that's something that i would like to do so we uh we poured ourselves another drink and we went out and we sat on the uh the bridge on the road outside hashtag blessed and just sat above the river and sat there in the dark with our drinks and chatted about all kinds of things um where we are in our lives our childhoods um our i don't know our personal philosophies our different experiences our relationships the stuff people talk about <laughs> do you i mean that's what i talk about <laughs> We didn't talk about football. Uh, I talk about football with other people, um, and that's that's a good thing as well. But um, that was a moment. I mean, that was a moment, and it was lovely. And the, I guess the, the mutual understanding of of safety. This is safe. That leads to. Uh, an opening up that leads to a trust that encourages the the connectivity and encourages the the exchange of of experience and the exchange of of life and, and maybe that's what it is and maybe that's what's so can be so stimulating or exhilarating it's it is that this is my life oh yeah okay that's that's interesting well this is my life okay and if you can really kind of be open to it you're sort of stepping in to the other person's life and they're stepping into yours um and i suppose ultimately that's a that's a form of 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 empathy um and I've always liked that idea, that idea of the idea of being a fellow traveler through life. Um, maybe it's, it's, it's sort of a quite a, a benign assumption that we're all journeying in our own different ways through the through the maze of life um through the labyrinth through the through the stormy seas um and we're all trying to work out our own best ways of negotiating the conditions negotiating the obstacles and maybe there's no greater obstacle than oneself so negotiating the self um and that that idea and it, it was funny that my my daughter said to me earlier about um you know i was saying you know the things the one thing that might make me cranky or put me in a bad mood and one of her suggestions was yourself i thought that was quite a I mean, maybe it's a fluke. <laughs> I was like, she, she, you know, she wasn't saying it in a, you know, a morbid or sarcastic or cynical way. 
um i thought wow that's a very that's a very smart suggestion and you know if we're staying on topic here with this idea of safety maybe that's one of the the most important relationships to establish safety in um the relationship with yourself are you are you safe are you safe to be with <laughs> i mean i'm you know i'm laughing but that's that's a serious question and i mean i can speak as someone who in in my kind of history of of uh depression and sort of angry depressive episodes the the level of negative self talk destructive self talk the um the 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 self loathing the self abnegation um the the invalidation of of self that like i mean none of that stuff feels particularly safe it can be really vicious it can be um it can be brutal and i can still go to that place quite easily if um you know if the circumstances of of a day of a week of my life of of whatever like a, you know things can conspire at any time um and just i can easily find myself in that frame of mind and i'm learning i'm getting better all the time at at um just being an observer of those moods um and not not freaking out too much and not compounding those moods and that self talk with further judgment with further reaction um but it's taken me an awful long time to 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 get to that place and i'm not saying it's all good and i i often ask myself if if i'm operating with a sort of a a, you know, a false belief that coming to an accommodation with those moods means it's all good and you know coming to an accommodation that involves an acceptance or a sort of a a resignation uh which is basically uh you know i have this assumption that oh yeah that'll that's 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 in me that's who i am that's my personality that's that's my palate uh my emotional psychological palate and it was established at a very young age and that'll continue to be present um i mean i can't i'm not sure what circumstances would have to prevail in my life for those episodes to completely disappear um yeah i'm not sure it's i don't know i don't know i mean i, I was about to say it, it probably depends on on um you know the important relationships in my life but it's more than that isn't it i mean our, our sense of wellness our sense of personal uh contentment or happiness if you want to use that word uh, i i believe it's attached to many different things and you know relationships with other people is one of them um our romantic life relationship is another one our relationship with ourselves is another one our our sense of purpose or how we're applying ourselves in life is definitely another one um and maybe our perception of the world we we live in and the the i suppose the the security the stability of that world the the rightness of the world um you know you know when i say rightness i mean it, it being sort of fit for purpose the you know being in its right state to to allow us to thrive and i'm going to say us you know not not the individual but all of us together um 
I mean, that's that's surely in the mix as well. And definitely safety can be plugged into that idea, how we see the future. You know, are we, are we moving in a safe world? Um, so, yeah, safety really it's it's it, like it, it it's everywhere you know uh, you know ask yourself am i am i safe am i safe to proceed is it safe is it safe to to carry on is it safe to to keep going on this path the path into the unknown um and this is, you know, this is the funny thing, because I, I mean, I spoke earlier about this idea that I like something controllable or I see something controllable in the the one on one dynamic. And yet I'm very I feel like <laughs> maybe I haven't analyzed this enough, but I feel like I'm very accepting of the, the uncontrollable nature of of life. I'm under no illusions. I can't control anything that's coming. Um, But I suppose, again, and, and, you know, obviously if you've listened to the podcast before, you know I put a lot of stock in in routine and, um, you know, what I refer to as, well, from from myself, you know, healthy habits or healthful habits. Um, And that maybe primarily that refers to certain... uh, exercise routines regimes practices that i i um keep very kind of centrally in place in my life but um as far as i'm concerned the uh the relationships in my life are a huge part of that um you know a huge part of that sort of world building and um to me that's part of this the safety structure as well um to go well if you put if you put into these relationships if you build those relationships if you make them if you make them strong if you you hopefully or certainly you know if you're, if you're doing your part to make them sustainable um and to help them thrive that ultimately that's a that's a safety structure um that feeds you know good energy and and sort of relational nutrients back to you um and and it's all it's all a network then it's all a network the way you know the way trees put their roots down and communicate with each other um you've come across that you've come across that theory haven't you that uh, that that research that data you know, this massive network of trees communicating with each other through their their root systems um i i, I might be completely uh, <laughs> mischaracterizing what's actually happening there but um but that you know in, in, you know in the human sense that that really is how i think of you know my, my friendships um like that's that's the network like not networking in the business sense in the kind of let's get ahead sense um useful connections sense like the network of true relational sustainability um and in a way that's the safety net that that whole idea of someone being able to say i've you know i've got you and um you know i'll be here for you or i'll catch you when you fall um yeah that's a that's a that's a you know maybe that's that's been too literal about the whole thing but that's that's in the mix i mean that's the that's the gamble that's the leap of faith that you go yeah these these roots will go deep and ultimately they'll help me they'll help me stay up They'll help me stay up so I can reach the sun. How about that? <laughs> is that is that hippie enough for you? Um, that might not be a, that might not be a bad place to conclude. 
Um, but yeah, maybe just you know have a have a have a think about that one. That whole idea of safety. Are you offering safety to people? Because I think that's a, I think that's a wonderful wonderful thing. Um, and it's um, I don't know. I mean, to me, safety is what what like what does safety look like? Does it it, it looks like non judgment? Um, it looks like warmth, friendliness, um, a willingness to listen. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's enough. That's a very good start, anyway, isn't it? <laughs> that's a very good start. So, uh, yeah. And who's your like? Think about it. Who are your safe? people who are the who you know where are the safe relationships in your life who do you go to who do you spend time with and go yeah this is safe now i can be a snoozing bunny rabbit <laughs> it's it's hard not to go to the herbivores the woodland creatures um i don't know great white a great white shark does a great white shark need to feel safe? Or is a great white shark swimming the oceans trying to convince everyone else that it's safe? I'm safe, honestly. Like the uh, <laughs> like the reformed um, <laughs> predators in, uh, in Finding Nemo. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's a, <laughs> it's a great sequence in Finding Nemo where the merest sniff <laughs> of a bit of blood sends the great white shark into an absolute killing frenzy it's quite scary um yeah do you have friends like that <laughs> sorry excuse me uh yeah i you know the, the, yeah no thanks stay away friends like that just too too unpredictable unsafe so you know is all of this ultimately am i am i advocating dullness and boredom um maybe maybe uh i don't know i mean like isn't that something you want from your friendships a sort of a dependability i, mean, I suppose you can depend on someone to be completely mad um i think that's how my daughter sees me she can depend on me to fly off the handle and be completely unreasonably uh, angry um, and then revert to kind of calmness and civility and openness and yeah but look at I'm very aware it's not it's not her responsibility to manage me it's my responsibility to manage me and to not impact her um unduly um unnecessarily i don't want to burden her at all to be honest with you um i want to uh what would you say if you think of someone like that in your life what do you want I, you know i just want to, oh yeah i want to be safe i want my daughter to think that's a that's a safe person to go to I trust him. I like him. I'm happy to to spend time with him. And um, so far, that's that's working pretty well for us. So uh, I'll keep um, I'll keep trying to do the work. Okay, there you go. That's it. I think I don't think I've anything else tonight. I'm going to take myself off to um, off to my bed, and uh, I'll I'll talk to you again next week. So thank you very much for listening um i hope you enjoyed what you you heard it was a bit uh a bit contemplative a bit reflective tonight uh, a slower tempo perhaps but um i think that's I, I i really do i really do think that's a very very powerful concept the idea of safety um and how it can nurture a lot of good things in our lives um, and yeah lay the ground for for strengthening for growing for nurturing for for so many good things 
Okay, um, I'm a safe person to to send lots of nice love to and uh, comments, reactions, responses on social media, YouTube, uh, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can email me at theclearoutlive at gmail dot com. Uh, you can support me using the supporter link, which is an Acast platform for contributing something to the the upkeep of this independent podcast or you can become a regular a regular benefactor of the podcast using the patreon link that's patreon.com forward slash the clear out so there you go lots of things you can do comment share subscribe rate whatever okay Mind yourselves. Mind yourselves. I'll talk to you next week. Stay safe. See ya. Bye.